Um, thanks for having me. So I, I, I don't really have a speech. I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes, I'll, and then we'll do some uh, Q&A. Uh, I love doing this because I love the inspiration and motivation that people your age and where you are in life have. Because i got to tell you, most of the time, I spend my days with miserable, grumpy people. And you'll find, as you go through life, we're all like children. We start out really excited about life. I know it's hard to believe at your age, but most people get pretty miserable. So when I call a meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning, there aren't many smiling faces. And the funny thing is, people say to me, you know, it, it's so hard to get up early, and, and the traffic was really bad. And I say, when I got here this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, the traffic was great. <laughs> there was no traffic. And those same people that are miserable and grumpy and cranky about their jobs, if I ask them for a 5.30 a.m. tea time to play golf, they'd be the happiest guys in the world. So why is that? Why do people get thrilled to show up for golf and not work? Because somewhere along the way, we were forced to do something that we really didn't want to do. So I did an interview this morning with uh, Kevin O'Leary, who's on our show. He's the bald. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when we did these interviews, you call in to Sony, and then reporters across the country call in. You do these in 10-minute batches across North America. So we have to introduce ourselves. So Kevin goes, uh, hi, I'm Robert. I'm the uh, good-looking one with hair. <laughs> and I said, hi, I'm Kevin. I'm the bald, ugly one. <laughs> and so the reporter asked Kevin, we're talking about this next door, she asked Kevin, how do you know, it's so weird to hear from you. <laughs> wow. So... <laughs> How do you know you're successful? And Kevin said, when I made a lot of success. <laughs> Maybe get the way you <laughs> So Kevin goes, it's all about the money, right? So why did you go into Congress? Peer pressure. Right? So everybody, this is my son. And I think a big reason he's here is because of dad's pressuring him to get a degree. you got to get a degree. Which, by the way, you have to get a degree. You have to get a degree. Absolutely, friggin' lutely, you got to get a degree. Let me tell you why. Whether you believe it or not, you have to get your degree for no other reason, as I said next door. When you go out in the real world and apply for a job, let me tell you what we do. We get 100 applicants for a job, we throw out the ones that don't have a degree. Nobody takes the time to read your resume. You've got to get past the first cut. And if you don't have a university degree in this day and age, you ain't getting past the first cut. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how pleasant you are. You're just not going to get there. All right, so peer pressure. Why'd you get into this? I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how pleasant you are. You're just not going to get there. For what? In order to do what? In order to make? <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. I'll give you a little trick. If you ever apply for a finance or a sales job, here's one of the things that people look for in your answers. If one of the top five things you say in the interview is not that you want to make money, you're probably not going to get the job. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. It all depends on how much you want to make. Right? So, what's a lot of money? Is a million dollars a lot of money? <laughs> so it's all relative, right? Right? Like, I came to Canada, I mean, seriously, I'm just so melodramatic. I came to Canada, right? My parents retired on, I think, $40,000 in RRSP. And they lived great. They never complained, but they also never took a vacation unless they had the cash. They never did any of that stuff. You know, you'll find that the only people that complain about being happy and fulfilled in 
like are usually the ones with money. So when my dad was starting out and working in a factory sweeping floors, because it's the only job he could get, I never remember my dad coming home and saying to my mom, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Is, is this where I'm going with my life? Now that we have a lot of money, we live in a really nice neighborhood, you know what all our friends do? They complain about their direction in life. Are we happy? They go to yoga classes. They, they have a really balanced, rounded life. So money is wonderful because it gives you the ability to ask those kind of questions. But until you pay for your basic necessities in life, any amount of money is a lot of money. Right? So, but in the big scheme of things, a million dollars isn't a lot of money. Right? Odds are everybody in this room, by the time you retire, will be a millionaire. And if you're not, you're probably not going to be able to retire. <laughs> is 10 million a lot of money? Is 50 million a lot of money? Is 100 million a lot of money? Right? Is a billion a lot of money? Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> so I'm not worth a billion dollars. I'm worth north of maybe 100 something. Um, <laughs> so when I got into business, I'll be absolutely honest with you, I had no grand scheme, I had no plans, I just wanted to make a living. So when I got into business, <laughs> this is so good for my ego, I, get to <laughs> I, I just wanted to make money, right? I mean, you asked me why did I get into business, I just wanted to make a million bucks. I didn't even want to go to university. I just wanted to quit high school, go out, get a job, and make some money. And my dad said, you got to get a degree. Great advice. And I did. And I went into a BCom. And I was in BCom for six months. And I said, what am I going to do with this? Back then, there was no entrepreneurship. If you got a BCom, you became an accountant. And no disrespect to anybody who wants to do that. But I said, I cannot be an accountant. So I, I dropped out. I went home and said to my dad, I said, I'm done, I'm quitting university. And my dad, in his broken English, looked at me and said, I love you, but I bury you in the backyard. <laughs> so I said, okay, that's not going to work. I got to get a degree. Just got to get a degree. So what can I get a degree in where you don't really have to show up for class? I get to do something I love, which is read, and then you argue all day long. So I got a degree in classical English literature and political science. That's my degree. I'll never forget the day I went home and I told my mom, I'm going to study English. And my mom said, fine, you know English. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, it doesn't really matter where you go with what you have. It's all about where you're going to end up. Brenda and I got a tour of the Japanese garden today. And I love the analogy Chelsea, who gave us a tour, had. There's two paths, I don't know if you know this in the garden. There's the path which is straight and easy, and then there's the path that zigzags and is very hard. And that's the analogy I always have in life is, you don't really know where you're going to end up. I'll tell you how I got in the computer business, because I didn't start out in that. I have a degree in English. But I want to make a million bucks. That was it. Didn't care what I did. I was a mini Kevin O'Leary with better hair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, it was money, 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 money. Money, baby, I've got to make money. Money, 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 money. And then a funny thing happened along the way. I made some money. So I made some money. And I, <laughs> and, and I bought a nice house in a nice neighborhood. And I bought my dream car, which was a 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. I'll never forget. And I put it in the garage, and I'm super excited. And I was like, I don't know, 26, 27 years old. And I thought, yeah, baby, I made it. Because in my scheme of life, 